So today we are going to be talking about section three. And the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that there are two departments in Montana that run all of our taxes. Which Montana tax does the Department of Revenue, what are they in charge of? Well, first off, what are our Montana taxes that we've studied? SIT, right? And SUDA. Which one does the Department of Revenue deal with? SIT. Therefore, which one does the DOLI deal with? SUDA. Okay? So obviously you have to know that. We're also going to revisit this new higher reporting form. Can somebody refresh me as to what that is? We studied about that also in the federal um, section of the class, I think, one, in one of the first chapters. What's a new higher reporting form used for? It's not the I-9. Uh, it's used if somebody comes to work for me within 30 days, I have to either shoot a picture of their W-4 uh, or I have to fill out this form. And I have to send it to Helena. And um, the address in Helena is down here. And the reason that I'm, it, huh? This is just for the state. This is for the state, but this form, the, all your information, your data goes into that mainframe for the Office of Child Support Enforcement. Remember? So if you got a job and you owe money to your ex-spouse or your, to, for your child's welfare in, you know, Oklahoma and you're up here working, it's going gonna, it's gonna to double check through that database. So a new hire reporting form, it's, it's for a federal program, but it's, it's implemented at the state level. So as an, an employer, you're required, when anybody new comes on board, you either fill out this form, which I'm not going to fill out another form. I'm just going to take a picture of their W-4, because that's got all the same information, doesn't it? Address, social, everything. And I'm going to fax it here to Helena. And this is a year old. I wouldn't doubt at all if now you're scanning and submitting them digitally. Okay? So you should be able to speak to that, the new hire reporting form. What's the purpose? Where do we send it? Why do we do it? There's 56 pages, or is that the very last page? Oh, I don't know what just happened there. I went all the way to the very end. Funny. Okay. Well, we got that covered. Okay. Uh, withholding tax guides. So withholding is another word for SIT, right? It's the amount that we take from our people's paychecks. So let's just go through the steps. <laughs> all the pages are upside down? Yeah, when you yeah. do one, it doesn't affect all of them. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> that was a BOFU job of scanning. Oh, shit. Okay, well. Huh. Huh. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to have this rescanned and reposted. Who, who I asked to do the scanning obviously didn't take a good look at this. Um, what? Oh, I see what they did. Okay, I do everything on recycled paper. The upside down pages are the back side in, of the recycled paper, and they're not relevant. So really, you're like skipping every other page. How confusing is that? I'll still get it rescanned. Okay, but let's just let's just go through here. So really, state one, or step one is what's your responsibilities as an employer? And again, what you're supposed to know off of this isn't like, oh gosh, memorize all the exempt wages, but rather if I ask you something about exempt wages, oh, where do I go look that up? Right? It's in the booklet. So here's the list of um, folks whose wages are exempt from state withholding. And you can see that it goes on here. This is a an awesome chart 
where you can go look at um, any specific situation and then go over and say, oh yeah, if I'm a if I'm a public official, if I'm a mayor, you know, line 16, am I subjected or not subjected to withholding? Well, I'm subjected. So again, you're not memorizing this list, but you're scanning over it so you know, you know, kind of the oddities that are in it. Okay, next question, and you guys should be able to answer this, 2A. How do you figure out how much to withhold? What document are you going to go to? W-4, absolutely, just like we did with the feds. With the feds, we went to the W-4 and we saw, okay, you make X and you're single with two. Then what kinds of tables did we go to? Remember the names of the tables? If, if you could, you went to the wage bracket if they were, you know, like made under 80 grand a year, right? They made more than 80 grand a year or were paid on some weird schedule, we went to that percentage of withholding, right? So basically works exactly the same with Montana, except for you don't have different charts for single and married. So that's the big difference. So um, here basically it just tells you what I just said. You use W-4. What about those supplemental wages? Remember those? What are those? Remember what we did with the supplementals? They were like retroactive pay and bonuses and uh, yeah, things like that. Flat rate for Montana is what percentage? Did I tell you three? Okay, that's my bad because I can see right here they're saying six. That must have gone up. And for the state, it's, or for the feds, it's 25. Okay. Uh, and again, I'm going every other page because this is printed on recycled paper. I don't know why they copied the back side. I'm going to get this fixed. Um, is the remittance schedule, in other words, how often do I have to deposit my SIT? That's what a remittance schedule is. And basically, if you look down here, it's exactly like uh, the feds, right? So accelerated means that I owe a lot of money. Hey, I'm a pretty good-sized organization. I have a lot of set. So that's the, if you pay Wednesday through Friday, you deposit by the next Wednesday. That's okay. And if you, uh, if you pay Saturday through Tuesday, you deposit by the next Friday. Yeah, so that's accelerated exactly like the feds. Or, and you don't, you don't really need to know about these thresholds. They're going to tell you. They're going to send you a letter and tell you what you are. Uh, if you're in the second row here, monthly, that looks exactly like the feds too, right? 15th by the next month. The only thing that's different is they've actually got a filing type or a deposit type called annual. And that's if you're really small, you only pay once a year when you actually do your MW3. Can anybody guess what an MW3 is just by looking at the title? Yeah, yeah, it's a Montana W-3. So what's that going to be a transmittal on? Yeah, your Montana W-2s. Do you have to fill out different W-2s for Montana? No, this is just one of the copies, right? So when you do W-2s, the first copy goes where? Social Security Administration. Second copy goes with the MW-3 to Montana. Yep. And then the rest of them go to the employee, don't they? Um, okay. Yeah, that's recycling. Okay. And this is, I don't know why we're at 1900% here. Then they're telling you about the different ways you can pay. Uh, you can either pay uh, basically with a debit, uh, an ACH debit, an ACH credit, or in the far right, the old-fashioned way, sending a coupon called an MW1, 
to pay. So regardless of how often you're depositing, right? So I might be accelerated, I might be monthly, whatever. I've got to file an MW3 once a year. And again, the MW3 is the cover sheet for the W2s. And um, does the 1099 go with the W2s? Well, this is kind of where it gets weird. Only if you took SIT withholding from somebody on their 1099. And we don't even know why you would do that. It's a very rare situation. So kind of don't kind of don't even really pay attention to that. That's really an exception. So in our mind, if I have a 1099, what do I use for a cover sheet? 1096. If I use it for Montana and I just take a copy of the 1096. If I'm filing W-2s with Montana, what do I use for a cover sheet? MW-3. Yep. Okay. How's that for confusing? <laughs> Okay, lots of penalties, don't be late, don't underpay, um, da 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 da. And then they tell you how to get on and get your account set up. So basically I'm going to walk you through the steps. Step number one, I'm a new employer. I have got a petition or asked the state of Montana to um, allow me to withhold SIT. So it's called an application for a permit. You can see I'm pointing to the box that you check off. I want to be, uh, I want to withhold tax. So I've got to give them all my information, my name and address. This is really important right here. Oops, number eight. Uh, where's that? Uh, what type of business am I? Um, and then I need to tell them in number nine, why am I applying? Did I buy a business? Did I start a business? Um, those are the most important things. Here's the instructions for the registration form. Oops. Oops. Okay. Um, so, and then here, after you register, then you're going to get employees, and you're going to give them W-4s, and you're going to run payroll, and here are the withholding tables. And you can see that there's, no, for, there's only one withholding table for monthly. There's only one withholding table um, for semi-weekly. There's only one withholding table for weekly. So let me give you a couple payrolls and I want you to go see if you can um, look it up for me and tell me what you think their Montana withholding is. Does everybody have that open in front of them? Probably need to do that. So that it's in Moodle section 3 and I'm on page something. 21. Thank you. So let's say, huh, everything's wacky today. I thought I'd take my, So the first gal makes $40,826 a year. She's paid semi-monthly. Her W-4 says married with four. And I want you to use the tables and tell me what you think her SIT withholding is. And then secondly, uh, So 
So using the tables, I'd like you to um, try and calculate for me what you think the SIT withholding is for each of these folks. And I'll give those of you that are online listening as well um, a couple minutes to calculate this. Amanda, did I get your memo? No,
So the first one's pretty straightforward, huh? How much did the guy or the gal make per payroll? What was her gross? 170108. So there's no difference between married and single. So all you had to do was find the semi-monthly uh, table. Go down, pick her SIT. How much was it? How much? I got 60. Yeah, that sounds about right. Sure. If I hear the same answer a couple times, I figure, okay, odds of people being wrong more than with the same answer, not, not so high. This one is a little bit trickier, right? How much did he make per payroll? Nine three three. So with this one, when you go to the tables, what happens? You're over. Yeah, he's over, right? You have to go down and it says you have to subtract you have to do you have to subtract for withholding allowances with state or do you just go right to the calculation? Yeah, I think you go right to the calculation. And it basically, you just follow that little algorithm at the bottom, right? So it says SIT equals, can somebody read me the math? How did we go over? Yeah, I'm yeah, not because over. It's, it has a table from 9750 to 10,000. Over is 11. Over is 11. Oh, sorry, that was my bad. I thought the table stopped at... Um, Oh, gosh. Okay. Let's, um, I'm sorry, I didn't realize the tables went that high. Um, okay, so at any rate, how much, how much is his then? 538. I thought we decided, oh, 99.33. Okay, so it would have been 538. Let's just do another really quick one to make sure that we all know how to do the math. Let's just say, uh, let's say that he makes 219.2 a year. Percentage six point six. Yes. Was that what y'all got? So it's a lot easier than the feds because you don't have to subtract the withholding allowances and you don't have to remember to check the married versus single. So pretty straightforward, right? So step number one, you register. Step number two, you withhold accordingly. What do you suppose step number three is going to be once you've taken taxes from people? What do you got to do with them? Hello? Deposit, right? So now we have to deposit. And can somebody remind me what the different payment schedules are, the different deposit schedules? You're either semi-weekly or you're monthly, or with Montana you could also be classified as what? Annual, right? So you're one of those three. So basically, and we looked earlier, you can either do um, debit card or credit cards or ACH credit. If you're doing it manually, you need to fill out one of these, an MW1, Montana Withholding Tax Payment Voucher. Super straightforward, all they want to know, and you, you have to, I mean, you have to send one of these in or they're not going to know where to apply the money. Um, 
name and address, FEIN, what date is this ending for? Is it ending, you know, 228 or is the payroll on 215? I mean, what, what, what period does this apply to? When you register in number three here, you're going to get a Montana withholding number. It's like five digits. And just the amount paid. You just clip the coupon, you write a check, you put it in an envelope together. But again, right above this, you can see most people are now um, doing, making their payments electronically. It's just a lot easier and you don't have all the paperwork. And then step number four, the last thing that we have to do is we have to report our SIT. And like I said, the way that you do that is with an MW3. And you can see up in the top right-hand corner, it says MW3. This is your cover sheet for your W-2s. So be mindful when I ask you, how many different kinds of transmission forms do you have for W-2s? You have to tell me you have two kinds. One for the feds and one for the state. The one for the state also serves as the annual report reconciliation for SIT. And you can see this is pretty straightforward as well. Number one, how many W-2s are you submitting? Number three, how much income tax is in all of those? Um, number five, how much did I pay? And number six, how much do I owe? If I didn't pay everything that I'd withheld, I owe it. Then they want you to go payroll by payroll by payroll and tell them how much did I withhold column C and how much did I pay. That's their way of making sure that you did everything on time. You're going to have to do most of these forms for assignment number two, but I'm not going to ask you to do the bottom. So when you go to fill out your MW3, don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, that's just busy work. I'm not going to give you, you know, 28 paydays worth of data. That's stupid. But in the real world, you've got to fill that all out so they make sure that you deposit it on a timely basis. But for our purposes here, we're not, I'm not going to give you enough data to do all that, so don't panic. And here's the whole second page of that. Okay. Next issue, SUDA. SUDA is administered by the Department of Labor and Industry. And basically, there's two steps here. Number one is register. You don't get to use the same number between SIT and SUDA, which is kind of silly. We used to have a cross registration process, but we haven't for a number of years. And then with SUDA, you just report and pay quarterly. Okay, so there's really only two steps. Uh oh. Oops. The key here, you guys, is does everybody have the same pseudo rate? No, everyone's, got, well, not everyone, but I mean, there's a number of different rates you can have. And I think what's the most important thing here is that you understand if, if a, somebody comes to you and says, why do I have a 2.2% rate? My buddy who's in the same business, you know, we're both transmission mechanics, he's got a 1.8% rate. Okay, there's two things that basically go into it. The first thing is, which schedule are you under? And basically, this is what this 1 through 11 that's up here in the column headings, that's the state of Montana determines that. Which rate schedule are we using this year? And that's based upon how much money's in the trust fund. So in years where there's not very much unemployment, like now, and uh, there's a, a high balance in the trust fund, they're going to publish a low rate schedule. In the middle of the recession in like 2008, 2009, we were up on schedule eight because there was a lot of people unemployed, a lot of pressure, and the trust fund balance was low. So you can't do anything about that. That's the whole state is under the same rate schedule, right? So that's the first thing. What rate schedule am I under? Or is everybody under? The second thing, though, is your individual information. So how much is my reserve ratio? So stick with me here. I'm down here. Um, basically, they want to know, 
And they call contributions is their word for tax. I don't really think of contributions. <laughs> tax is being the same word, but they use it. Uh, how much did I pay in for SUDA minus how much uh, was claimed against me? So say I paid in, you know, 2800 bucks last year and nobody claimed against me because I didn't have any turnover, right? My reserve is going to be 2800 bucks, right? That means I'm something called a surplus employer. I've got a positive balance. Okay, that's a good thing. So my reserve then, because I'm a positive balance, okay, I'm going to have a lower rate than somebody who's a deficit balance. So here it tells you if you're an eligible, an eligible employer, if you've had three years of being uh, in the black. And if that happens, you're going to have a much lower rate. If you're a deficit employer, that means I paid in 2800 bucks and they paid out 15000 right? Because I lost somebody and they had a valid claim and they got unemployment worth fifteen grand. Now I'm obviously clearly a deficit employer. So these are the two kinds of employers. So if I ask you, just to kind of reiterate, what determines somebody's pseudo rate, what would you tell me? Okay, but even before you get to that, yeah, what schedule, rate schedule, is the whole state under? And that depends upon the health of the system in general. That's number one. Then within that rate schedule, the second issue is, are you a deficit or a surplus employer? And that determines within that rate schedule how much you pay. Okay. Is everyone clear on that? So one thing you can't control, one thing technically you should be able to control by good HR policies, good hiring policies, da 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 Although we all know that sometimes you just, people leave regardless of what you're doing right. Okay. So, um, and then our wage base for 2016 is 30500 We know that. Is that the number we've been using, or did we use last year's number? We've been using 30500 Okay, awesome. This is the registration form. It's not the same as the uh, Department of Revenue one, but it pretty much asks for the same kind of information, just in a different way. Um, over here is where you have to fill out the type of organization. You can see it wants to know who the owners are. The most important thing on this form is number 11. When you're applying, you've got to tell them what your primary activity is. And that's how they're going to establish your coming out of the gate pseudo rate. So if you write, I'm in uh, retail, I can tell you you're going to have a high rate. If you're in something like communication and public utilities, probably you're going to have a lower rate because there's not as much turnover. If you have over here in the third column, if you've got a company that does some retail and some fixing computers, you know, you sell some computers and you fix them, then you need to split it up between uh, services and retail and tell them what percentage of your gross income and how many employees in each to help them give you an appropriate rate. And then lastly, number 18 is important. Um, did you change your business entity? So that means like I'm a proprietorship and I became an S corp or I was an S-Corp and I changed to an LLC. So if that happens, they want to know that. Okay, and then the last thing, and then we'll go take a look at the assignment for today, uh, is the UI5. And I do want to do a little practice on this together because this has a tendency to confuse students. So. What, what you're going to do is you're going to actually get a form with a rate pre-printed and sent to you. And of course, if you were all employers, your rates would all be different. The cap's the same for everybody, but the rate's different. So basically, what it's saying here is I want to know how much my people have made this quarter and how much of this number 
is in excess of 30,500. So what I'd like you to do, if you could please, on just a piece of paper, uh, you don't need to worry about, just make three columns, please. Social security number, initials, total wages paid this quarter, excess wages paid this quarter. Obviously, on the real form, you put last name, first name. Uh, okay, say, the first thing you've got to ask me is what quarter am I in? And I'm in the fourth quarter. Can you, if I told you, you know, I'm paid monthly and I gave you my monthly payroll, you could pretty e easily figure out quarterly gross, right? But what do you need to know to figure out excess? Not the rate. I want to know how much of my wages in the fourth quarter are over 30500 oh. Yeah. Yeah, well, the cap's 30500 What do you have to know? So I make three grand a paycheck. Monthly. I'm in the fourth quarter. What do you have to know? How much have you made to date exactly? Oh, is that what you were saying before when you were saying yeah. cap? Right. So really, I mean, the, the whole answer... That you, that you were getting to, you just didn't quite have the right verbiage, is you need to know prior year-to-date gross, right? So that's the only way you're going to figure out if I've capped or not. So let me just give you a couple people and some information, and let's see if you could fill out the form, okay? So uh, let's say... One more time. They're paid monthly. Monthly. Yes, these are monthly payrolls. How often is this report for, though? Quarterly. Quarterly. And my rate... So what I want you to do is fill out your little sheet that we just did above, right, with the columns. And then I want you to do, do that kind of little top piece and then lines 1 through 10, please, just for those four employees. Okay? You understand what you're doing?
Yes. How much did she make in the quarter? Nine grand, right? How much had she made before the quarter? How much? Thirty-four something? Yeah. So how much of her nine thousand is over thirty thousand five hundred a year? All of it. All of it. Okay, second person. How much did this person make in the year? Or in the quarter, excuse me. How much have you made before? Eleven grand or something. So how much of his twenty nine fifty five was over thirty thousand five hundred for the year? None of it. Next person. Next person had made twenty eight nine before they got into the quarter. So this person straddles the cap this quarter, right? So they want to know how much of the seventy nine sixty five was over thirty thousand five hundred a year. I've been doing it backwards. I guess sixteen hundred of it was. But that's not what's asking. It wants to know how much is over. I got sixty three sixty five. Let me show you how I did that.
So here's how much she's made so far, right? And with another 79.65, that's going to put her at 36.865. The question is what? How much did she go over 30,500? She went over $6,365. Well, that's random. <laughs> this gal had only made 11 grand before today, so how much of her wages are over 30,500? None of it. Then you have to total these all the way at the bottom of that column in the UI5. Then I'm just going to write the line numbers down. Okay, so ask me questions now. The first person Everything was over 30500 because they'd already capped. Person number two and four didn't get close to the cap, so nothing was over it. The only person that's tricky really is number three because she straddled the cap. So you've got to figure out not how much up to the cap, which we've been doing with OASDI, but you want to figure out how much they went over the cap. And it's right in the title, Excess Wages. So basically what it's saying on the form is, here's your gross wages. Of that amount, how much was over 30500 Well, 15365 Therefore, in line three, how much is susceptible to suit up? Right? Then I've got to give you the rate. There's the tax. Here's the amount again. And line 10, how much are you enclosing a check for? Okay, let's take a look at the assignment. Does everybody feel pretty comfortable with this? That's due on Thursday. So between now and Thursday, you've got to do this assignment, plus you really need to look at those payroll tax returns. So it's back to Section 5, which is where all your homework is. And I'll just give you a couple minutes to read this, and then we'll talk about it.
Okay, so basically we've got a company that's in the third quarter. How many times are they running payroll this quarter? Seven times. Here's all the employees. Here's how much each of them earn each pay period. And you know how many pay periods there are in the quarter. Here's how much they earned before today. Here's a synopsis of the rest of the year. How much SIP did I have in the first, second, and fourth quarter? How much were my gross earnings the first, second, and fourth quarter? Obviously, you need to set up a spreadsheet, or you can do it. I prefer Excel, but it's not mandatory. And you're going to need to figure out how much withholding to take from each of their paychecks, right? SIT withholding. And we saw how to do that using the tables. And you've got all the information you, you need. You've got marital status, withholding, how often they're paid, and how much they earn per pay period. So you can figure out how much SIT to withhold each payroll. Then you need to convert that into quarterly numbers to fill into this chart. Right? So if you've got one payroll, you know how many times they're paid in a quarter, you can do that. You're going to do three things for me. One is you're going to complete an MW1 to make the deposit for one payroll. One payroll. Because they're accelerated. Wilmo is an accelerated filer. And so they have to deposit each pay period. Secondly, you're going to complete the UI tax report, which we just practiced, for the third quarter. And lastly, you're going to complete the MW3, which is for the whole year. And I gave you the other three quarters information. The thing that seems to stop students up on this assignment is one of the forms is for one payroll, one of the forms is for a quarter, and one of the forms is for a year. So don't get confused on what time period goes on what form. Okay? Questions? You can certainly email me if you have any questions once we get going. It's due Thursday. Due Thursday. Yep, so you need an MW1, which is your withholding form. You need an MW3, which is your MW3, which is your annual form. And then uh, this, this comes off of assignment number two. I give you the pseudo rate, and it's pretty faint. I think it says 3.0 is your pseudo rate. Okay? Up in the top right-hand corner. Thanks.